So, I was just looking at Car and Driver on Instagram. Uh, they are coming out with this. Hyundai, not Car and Driver. But Hyundai is coming out with a 275 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder found in the Vloster N. Vloster N. That could be what I replaced the ST with. That is sick. Performance, small. Would you guys like that? That might be that might be what we do. Um, but yeah, let's get into these cars that are gonna be something that we're interested in because of this COVID-19 virus uh, bringing down the economy. You might not have as much money to spend. You might not be confident in spending your money. Uh, so maybe some cheaper options for a performance car or a secondary car. These are the best options out there. I love coming into this garage and just seeing these two here. It's amazing. It's also funny to me how during this uh, pandemic, <laughs> everyone, like I was at Jersey Mike's today and everyone was like, the, the cashier leans over. He's like, hey, how's it going out there? Are you hanging in there? And like, it's like in Harry Potter when they can't say Voldemort, <laughs> you know, they're like, the name we do not speak of. It's fine. I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm social distancing. I'm doing my part as much as I can. I'm still going into these hospitals. Like, but that's, that's my job. That's what I have to do. Um, I just kind of find it's funny how we're like, hey, you good? You guys experience the same thing? All right, so onto this list. We'll start in the garage here. So these are the top five tuners to buy under $15,000. And this is really in no particular order. I can't say that one's better than the other. I just think that it's a solid list of cars that you guys might not have thought of buying uh, that are under $15,000 and have a lot of tuning potential. Some of them are like $5,000 and they're, they are fast out of the box. So if you don't wanna, if you just wanna maintain them or refurbish them, they're fast out of the box or there's a large aftermarket for them. First on the list is the Civic SI, and this is the eighth generation Civic SI. Uh, the reason I chose that one specifically is because I have a lot of experience with it. I owned one for four years. I owned a 2011 Civic SI Coupe. Um, it's a six-speed manual. It has a helical limited slip differential. It's a, it, and it revs to, I think it redlined at 8,200 RPMs. So it is such a fun engine, 197 horsepower, 139 foot-pounds of torque, which is, I have more torque when I run. It's a light car, it's use, huge trunk space, f efficient, all around great car. The motor in this thing is really what makes it so, such a fun car to drive. Just being able to rev and as soon as you hit like 5,800 RPMs when VTEC kicks in as much as a meme as that is or was, it really was fun to be able to keep it in that rev range. You knew if you shifted well because it would stay within VTEC. So that was, uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, click the card at the top of your screen. That's like one of the first YouTube videos I ever posted. It's dumb, terrible at shifting, um, but it got a ton of views and it gives, you can actually hear when the VTEC uh, kicks in. So um, I think you'll actually enjoy that just for the sound. For me, it is a terrible video representation of me. That was my intro into YouTube. So I got used to hate comments very quick. Now specifically, Within the eighth generation, what I want to talk about is the 2008 Civic Mugen SI. I'm probably, it might be Mugen or Mugen, Mugen. But anyways, they only made a thousand of these for the United States. Um, it has lighter forged wheels. It has a different suspension. It has a Mugen, uh, I think it's Muggen. I, I, just forget, just forgive me, please, Jesus, forgive me. It's six, it's 0. 0.6 inches lower. It's 2,941 pounds. And originally it was a $30,000 car, which that was the one controversial part about this. It provided no more power. So you still have the same power that the K20 Z3 engine provided, um, but you just got suspension handling upgrades. You also got a, uh, an after, or not an aftermarket, but a Mugen exhaust as well. So that was a really cool car. I still see a couple of them in Phoenix. They're extremely rare. I only found two of them online on CarGurus. I'm sure there's other websites where you can find them. But if you can find that specific model, I highly recommend going after it. It probably would be good to refurbish it, get the paint back to as good as you can, redo the wheels, check out, redo all the fluids, and then just the, keep the interior clean. That car is gonna hold its value over time. It's not gonna go down any further. Um, and if you can get it maintained fairly well, it might actually bump up a little bit. So I think if you can find one of those Mugen Civic SIs, only a thousand produced for the US, I highly recommend you go after it. It's pretty loud for 
a stock exhaust. Next up on the list is the Dodge Neon SRT4 produced from 2003 to 2005. Um, I think the number one issue this car has, is it was called a Neon, and people are like, just a Neon. In reality, this is a mean car. It still has one of the best sounding exhausts out there. And the other interesting thing was, it was basically straight pipe from the factory. There were no mufflers on this thing. Zero to 60 is 5.6 seconds on the SRT4. To put that in perspective, if you own a Focus ST and it's stock, the best recorded zero to 60 time that car and driver was able to get was 5.9 seconds. So a car that was produced 10 years, yeah, 10 years before the Focus ST was getting better zero to 60 times then. So to me, that is just insane. First of all, to Ford, it's like, what the hell? But then to Dodge, it's like, how, what? That's insane. Now on top of all of that, this was a $20,000 car when you bought it new back in 2003 to 2005. They don't make cars, really. I mean, the Civic Si is about as close as you can get. I guess the Fiesta ST is, is in that range, too, as far as power goes. Um, but they kind of don't make performance cars like that anymore in the United States. So this car, I think, is a very unique option. It had the bucket seats. seats. Shifting them, they would, say, they would say it's like putting a shifter through gravel. It was a terrible feeling. It was tough to get it in gear at times. Uh, but the engine itself, the sound it makes, the experience you get in that car, I think it would be really fun to own and drive. And I also considered before getting the M2, I was like, maybe I just buy this for five grand, build it, nice Mustang, build it, and then uh, sell it or give it away after you make several videos in a series on it. So I thought about doing that uh, as well. Obviously, I'm in my M2. I did not go that route, even though that would have been much better for the channel. Uh, I'm, I'm really good at making bad decisions, but sometimes you, uh, you know, you gotta put your personal interest first. The other unique part about this SRT4 is there was an ACR package you could get. I think initially it was about a $2,200 option, uh, but this came with uh, lighter weight wheels, a different spoiler in some cases. Um, there were just uh, several other options that it came with. Uh, the wheels and spoiler being the big differentiator you can tell aesthetically. And if you can find one with the ACR package, I'd recommend you go that route. Just makes it a little more special. Um, and they're out there. You search car gurus, they're definitely out there. Um, but they're not as common as the SRT4, which really isn't that common anymore. The next choice, the obvious choice, I've covered it a billion times, the Focus ST. The Focus ST can now be had for under $15,000 and like well under $15,000. Usually it's the ST1s, but there are some ST3s out there, uh, if you search car gurus, that are listed for under $15,000. Now, I don't want to go too much into this car because if you just go to my 2016 Focus ST playlist on my channel, I have over 150 videos that I've done on mine, so I've covered it. Uh, just in short, you get a ton of power. It's very practical because it's, it's spacious compared to like a Neon SRT4 or a Fiesta or something like that. And then you have the straight line power to make it good on the interstate. But it's, uh, yeah, it's an amazing car. It has a ton of tuning potential to it. Uh, everyone likes to talk about the thing you get now with every single car is, oh, well, what's the reliability like? And there's always someone that will be like, oh, they're, they're unreliable. No matter what car it is, it could be BMW, it could be Honda. It's like the new type. Every single car, everyone's like, so I just stopped listening to all of it. I'm like, I don't care. If, if it's under warranty, doesn't matter if it's unreliable because it's covered under warranty. And if you're going to tune your car, there's obviously risks you take by tuning it. It's gonna increase the unreliability of it depending on what you're tuning. If you throw an exhaust in your car, it's not gonna make it unreliable. But depending on how far you go down that rabbit hole, it could become unreliable. So I, I just kind of like, you know, what do I want to drive? What do I think will be fun to drive? Does that look cool? Does it feel cool? Okay, I'm gonna buy it. Because if you are stuck on, well, I, I don't know, will the navigation work in two years? Like you'll be freaking, it'll take you forever. You'll never pick a car, because there's, there's negatives to everything. Um, and I think just the positive experience you get out of the car, has to outweigh that. So to those of you who are just like always worried about the reliability and things like that, 
don't go out of your price range in getting a car that if it does go, something goes wrong, you can't afford to fix it. That's, that's a bet. So think about that part of it. Give yourself a little bit more space or give yourself a little bit more time to save up for what you really want. All right, let's get back to this list. Next up, the Cobalt SS Supercharged and Cobalt SS Turbocharged. These cars, I, I do have a tiny bit of experience with. I had a friend who took me for a ride in a Cobalt SS Supercharged and the supercharger on that thing just whines and it pulls hard. I mean, it pulls hard through 80 miles an hour. It's just a fun car to drive. And again, this can be, this is something can be had for under $10,000. So it is just, it's an, it's, a, it's an exciting car to drive. The supercharged version had 205 horsepower, 205 foot-pounds of torque. The turbocharged version had 260 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque. So a lot more power there, but the supercharged version, I feel, is the more exciting one to drive just because the supercharger is more unique than a turbo, and uh, that whine is just intoxicating to listen to. The turbocharged version also has no lift shift feature, and there were a series of upgrade packages that you could get for the car through GM. Now, I don't know if you can still get those packages. You'd probably have to ask the owner of the car that you're buying it from uh, if they're installed. That way, you'll know what you're getting. I'm sure there's still somewhere online where you can get these upgrades, though. Zero to 60 on the supercharged, 5.9 seconds. Again, same as the Focus ST and the zero to 60 on the turbocharged is 5.5 seconds. That is so impressive to me. I mean, just, I mean, thinking about all the other cards out there uh, that would love to, oh, there's a, this Lamborghini is always parked here. It's at this Costco, there's a lime green Lamborghini. I think it's someone that works here. Like I was saying, GM offers a dealer installed upgrade package called Stage Kits, and it got as crazy as disabling the AC on the Stage 3 kit. Uh, so I just think that's really cool when manufacturers offer stuff like that They have the confidence in their car to be able to handle it and then it's warranty next on the list And I consider this the wild card of the bunch and that's the Dodge Caliber SRT4 It was produced from 2008 to 2009 and there were only 5,562 of these were produced and it looks like there were actually only a thousand sold between 2008 and 2009 so highly unpopular model uh, which is very unlike the uh, Neon SRT4, which sold over 25,000 units uh, between, I think, within two years. So they expected only to sell 7,500 of those a year, and that's how many that they sold, I think, in a two-year period. So that was a highly popular car. Um, the Caliber just didn't catch on like it. Even though it had higher horsepower and was a more practical car, just wasn't as cool in the eyes of the buyers at that time. The weight of the Caliber SRT4 was 3,189 pounds got 19 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon on the highway, had 19 inch wheels. Six speed manual transmission was the only way you could get it and then there was also functional brake cooling. There's many other features if you look up just the specs of the SRT4, read a couple articles on it. Um, I remember when this car was coming out, I was getting close to graduating high school and I wanted it so bad. I, I wanted this car more than anything. Obviously didn't end up getting it. My first car was a 2011 Civic Si. Uh, my God, what a cool car. And then the prices of these things are, are low and they're, they're pretty rare. Now, the interiors of this car, and like many of the other cars, it's a pretty big letdown. Um, but what I like about that is that gives you the, creative, the room for creativity. It's already a cheaper car. So if you want to throw some different seats in it, if you want to redo the upholstery, there's a bunch you can do and you're not risking that much because uh, it's not really a highly sought after car. So I think the power is great. I think the functionality is great. You can seat five people in it. It has a, it's, a, it's almost like a hatchback. And then it's just unique. You don't see it in many of them. And again, the exhaust sound is incredible. So now moving on to the final car, the two cars uh, in this lineup, and it's the only one that offers an automatic transmission, and that is the Scion FRS and the Subaru BRZ. So depending on whether or not you go with an automatic or a manual transmission, your horsepower is gonna vary slightly. The manual transmission versions eventually got a bump in power to 205. If you stuck with the automatic transmission, you stayed at 200 horsepower. This car, of all of the cars I listed, is gonna be the one that you can really make yours. It's faulted because it doesn't. It has a torque dip, it doesn't have a lot of power, blah, blah, blah. 
but if you drive it on the right roads, it's a really impressive car. The low center of gravity, the seating position, the shift feel, real wheel drive, it comes with a limited slip differential. It comes with so many good things and gives you room to make it whatever you want it to be. You can leave it stock, it's one of the most reliable cars in the world. Uh, if you want to tune it, you have every possible option you could ever want. Uh, if you want to supercharge it, turbocharge it, you want to do an LS swap, there is unlimited things you can do with this car and that's how they, they did that on purpose for the tuning community. The options are endless with this car and you look at someone like TJ Hunt who bought this car, started to tune it and what that snowballed to becoming one of the biggest automotive YouTube channels on YouTube. I think anyone could do that. Whether or not you want to make a YouTube channel or just have a project car to work on on the side, these cars are now, some of them are under uh, $10,000, slightly higher mileage. Uh, but again, if you're going to be tuning it and doing crazy things to it, it's going to be a fun project to see what's happening in these higher miles and what you can do to preventative maintenance, restoration, all of that stuff. I can tell you, yes, if you're just looking at numbers, it's not that impressive of a car, but the car is so much more beyond that. And it looks like they are going to address the power issue iteration of this car coming up soon. It's, the rumors are 255 horsepower. I personally have trouble believing that because that runs into the four-cylinder Supra that they're releasing in the U.S., which has 255 horsepower. Um, so I don't know how you're going to price those differently with one another. I think that would run in, they would almost can be competing with themselves if they ended up doing that. So we're just going to wait for the final call, see what the manufacturer ends up doing. Um, and then we'll go from there. But I think that is an excellent list that I put together. I know I left out things like the WRX, but uh, this is my personal list that I, these are cars that I really like that have fallen in price a ton. I think they're fun to drive um, and it gives you all of the options. For tuning potential, for fun value, for bang for buck, these cars are all excellent. Um, and I'm interested to see your feedback. Do you own any of these cars? Let me know in the comments below. Or if you have a channel where you feature one of these cars, uh, let me know in the comments below. I think it'd be really interesting to see. So I hope this video is helpful. Thank you for the support, and we'll see you next time.